Okay, uh, my name is Mark Chartrand. This is the Satellite Communications Essential Introduction course. And it's a three day course, and on the third day, we reach the climax, having pulled all the pieces together and do a link budget, which is the thing which determines whether you can or can't do a link to a satellite. So we reach this point, and we ask, what is a link budget? And realize that it is very analogous to a household budget. You add up all the good things, you subtract all the bad things, and see if you've got enough left over to do the job. So it's very similar to this. And things that go into it include the atmosphere, <coughs> the Earth station's power, the sensitivity, the satellite's power, space loss, and noise. So the way to put these all together, expressed in decibels, is to just really add and subtract properly. There are huge increases and decreases over the links of the satellite from one air station through the satellite to another. And it only makes sense to express these in decibels. So we can do a simple one without the noise part of the calculation and just look at the links from one side to another. But that doesn't tell us everything about the quality of the signal because we're concerned with carrier to noise, not just carrier. So we can do this link and find out that the amounts of power we're dealing with are terrifically low. The typical amount of power actually coming in, even after amplified by the size of the dish, is only on the order of a few trillionths of a watt. But finally, we can put in the noise figure and all the things that go together, and we end up with a link calculation, which involves the quality of our signal. That's what we're trying to determine. Carrier is good, noise is bad, we have the power of the transmitter, the sensitivity of the receiver, what happens in between because the wave spreads out over 22,000 miles. We have a figure for bandwidth use because the wider the bandwidth, the more noise creeps in from nature and interferes with you. We put in some atmospheric losses, first for clear sky conditions depending upon the frequency. We throw in some other losses for possible misorientation or polarization or something. We add a constant 228.6, and presto, we've got a link budget. And this is what determines whether you can do a link. If we're doing a digital link, we usually do what's a carrier to noise density, where there's no bandwidth term. It's done per unit bandwidth, and that makes it easy to do a digital link calculation. So we can turn this around, put all the figures in here, and find out whether we've got the signal to do what we want. Once we reach the C over N, the bottom line, literally, we can then go to the standard reference book, look up and say, okay, what quality TV picture or phone call or data stream or something is that going to give us? Or we can turn it all around and say, I know I need a given quality, I need to solve for the power of the satellite, then it tells me how powerful a satellite I've got to go look for. Or alternatively, we can also say, I know the quality, I know the satellite, how sensitive an earth station do I have? So basically, that's a carrier to noise ratio. We have to average them over the up and down links, which is kind of messy and you usually don't want to get into it, but here's the formula in case you need it. And when we want to do a digital link, which everything is becoming these days, we have to take that carrier to noise ratio, put in the data rate, and we come out with the measurement of quality of a digital signal. So that's basically a summary of the carrier to noise ratio. Thank you.